welcome everyone uh, to this Dynamics Con session on ALM for the Power Platform. I'm Michael Ox. I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who voted this session in. I uh, I feel pretty uh, feel pretty blessed to be here, as well as um, I'm I'm very excited to discuss ALM with you uh, as it relates to the Power Platform. Uh, it's something that I've been doing um, for quite some time. Um, last 24 months almost now. So this is Power Platform ALM, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Michael Ox, um, a business applications MVP, um, executive VP at Excellence. We are a small uh, consulting company based in Washington, D.C. area, Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, there's my uh, contact information if you want to get a hold of me. Um, as I mentioned, I've been doing ALM now for close to two years in the Power Platform. Uh, prior to that, uh, I was working in Power Platform for the last 15 years. And uh, even during that time when it was Dynamics CRM 3.0, Dynamics CRM 4.0, uh, 2011, 2015, 2016, all the way through, um, there was some element of LM involved in that. Um, it wasn't to the extent that it is today with the Power Platform, with so many more um, uh, components coming in to the Power Platform. It was more uh, associated with just getting solutions from one environment to another um, and, you know, uh, building plugins and running tests against those and things like that. But the, the landscape has become much more complex and it's become much more uh, involved uh, recently with, with so many new features coming into ALM. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, we're going to level set a little bit at the beginning for anybody that's here that isn't familiar with ALM. Um, you know, the majority of the people that are here are familiar with Power Platform, obviously, but it's important to discuss what specifically ALM is and how it, why it's important and um, and, and where we are today with ALM and the Power Platform. So from there, we'll talk about you know, what gaps have not been filled. Um, so that's the bad, the things that the platform can't do, and there's unfortunately not a lot of workarounds to. We'll talk about what the gaps are that have been partially filled. So those are the ugly ones. Sometimes they involve custom code, sometimes they involve taking out a hammer and just beating the thing um, till, it's, uh, till it works. And then um, we'll talk about what gaps have been filled recently or will be filled very soon. Those are the good. So it's not all bad. We're gonna start with the bad. We're gonna move on to the ugly and then we'll get to the good last. And then your mission, should you accept it, and I, this will be our, this will be the goal of this session uh, overall is to is to get others involved. Um, we really want to get people involved in the ALM discussion because it's important to customers, it's important to ISVs, it's important to um, you know, uh, it's important to Microsoft, obviously, that this ALM story in Power Platform is is one that is um, you know, uh, it works for everybody, and we'll look at the things that aren't working. Um, we'll look at the things that um, that we can work around at this point. But ultimately, uh, what I'd like to have everybody do is if you have, if you see something, say something. So if you have a specific um, issue with ALM and the Power Platform, make sure that you go and let people know about it. Um, we're going to have questions at the end of this discussion. And um, if you if you have questions, put them in the chat. Obviously, we don't have, we may have a lot of questions and we may not get to all of them. So if we don't get to your questions, be feel free to go to this link. This is the COE Starter Kit uh, GitHub uh, discussion board. And any questions about ALM that you have for the Power Platform, put it out there. Uh, you will get a response because, um, you know, we're monitoring that very closely and it's a very interactive uh, group out there. Some of the stuff is related to COE, which is the Center of Excellence Starter Kit. Other stuff is related to ALM specifically. So um, you know, be sure to ask your questions there. In addition to that, if you have issues with Power Platform ALM, bring it up as a support ticket. Uh, the you know the the engineering teams 
the, on the Microsoft side may not know all of the gaps in ALM. They are familiar with most of them, but there are use cases for the Power Platform that people are uh, implementing that they just may not have thought of in the past. Um, so it's always important to raise that up. Um, I, as a consultant, am currently working as a vendor with the Microsoft PowerCat team, and they're responsible for the COE Starter Kit, as well as uh, some other components that sort of fill these gaps that we're going to talk about today. One of them is the ALM Accelerator, and it's part of the COE Starter Kit. It's currently in public preview. We're going to look at that later in the demo. But um, so I have sort of a my in my current role, I sort of have a um, uh, I'm kind of walking the line between you know being outside looking in at Microsoft and also being inside Microsoft and and looking out. Um, so I know I come from a background of doing project work and, and implementing ALM. Um, and now I'm in a role where I'm actually getting to um, kind of deep dive into the ALM uh, side of things. So um, I'm monitoring these discussions. I'll be sure to answer questions if we don't get to them at the end of the session. So Power Platform ALM. So what is ALM? Um, it's a part of DevOps. It's not DevOps. Um, it is essentially moving from this development inner loop on the left side to the development outer loop on the right side or the outer loop on the right side. Um, the, the inner loop is the developer, the maker sitting down and doing writing code or building low code apps, building that, testing it, um, repeating, and then eventually pushing that uh, app out to their target environments. Um, so, ALM is not the planning requirement documentation side of things. Environment management, the fourth bullet there, is a little bit of environment management involved in ALM, um, but it's not, we're not going to talk about it today. That's why we've got like sort of a half strike through there. Um, but it is development, build, test, deploy. And then the configuration side of things, yes, there's a little bit of configuration, but there's ongoing configuration associated with outside of the ALM loop as well. So again, half strike. Um, and then the maintenance, monitoring, feedback, issue management stuff is all outside of what we're talking about in Power Platform ALM. So what parts of Power Platform are we going to talk about? So in this particular session, we're going to focus on Dataverse, Power Apps, and Power Automate. We're not going to talk a lot about Power Portals or Power BI. Uh, Power BI story for ALM is sort of sits outside of the whole solution architecture, and they've got their own, a little bit of their own sort of flavor of uh, ALM and moving things between environments currently. Portals is, we'll talk a little bit about that. I'll bring it up uh, in certain points in the, in the presentation, but not going to delve too deep into it. But Dataverse Power Apps and Power Automate as uh, the three that we're going to focus on today are enough for, for this length of a session. Um, obviously, this is a very deep, uh, it's a very broad topic um, because there's so many components involved and because there's, um, you know, there, there's so many things that need to happen in order for good ALM to happen. So we're not going to we're going to kind of cut out the virtual agents, AI builders, portals, Power BI, and just look, focus on the Power Automate, Power Apps, and Dataverse story. All right, so ALM. ALM is all about solutions in Power Platform. It is, I know you probably hear that and you say, well, you know, I can do ALM, you know, with, with a Canvas app. If I build a Canvas app outside of a solution, I can export it. I can import it into another environment. That's ALM. You know, I, I've accomplished my goal. Um, the reason that ALM or solutions are so important to ALM is that in the Power Platform is that the future of ALM is in solutions. Um, you probably noticed how many new components are coming if you work with solutions, how many new components are available when you go to the new or add existing, and they keep up updating every day. So there's tons of um, investment in ALM going into solutions. And if you're not in solutions, then you are going to be left behind. So 
if you're starting from scratch, start with solutions. Uh, if you're already in, you're going to want to start to move your stuff into solutions. Solutions do require Dataverse, so be aware of that. Um, you can still build Power Apps and Power Automates outside of solutions, but you need to have Dataverse in, uh, in your environment in order to use solutions. Solutions are not necessarily obvious to makers, and solution awareness can be confusing. We'll talk more about the bad now. So connection management, and I put that one at the top. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list of the bad, and I guarantee you that the chat's probably blowing up right now with all of the bad things that aren't in this list. And those are the things that I urge you to go put up on that discussion board. Uh, those are the things to ask questions about at the end of the session. But here's some of the things that are bad um, and some of the, 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 the top items in, in my opinion. So connection management, creating connections. Um, so we're mostly gonna be talking about automated ALM, meaning being able to deploy through a pipeline in Azure DevOps through a workflow in GitHub. Um, so the ability to do that in sort of a headless manner uh, just isn't available in the platform. So creating a connection on the fly, if you create an ephemeral environment that has nothing in it and you wanna deploy a solution and you need to create connections, you're pretty much out of luck at this point to be able to do that in the platform. Uh, sharing Canvas app with flows, that's sort of a, that's a small little bug, but it's an annoying one that flows don't automatically get shared when a Canvas app gets shared, or they don't necessarily get shared correctly when a Canvas app gets, app gets shared uh, through a solution. Um, the reason being is that there's Dataverse records that have to be shared as well when a flow is in a solution, and it's specifically the process entity. Um, one of the resolutions to that is, a, is to give global access to the process entity, not ideal. The other one is to specifically go to the process record and share it with a user. Um, so kind of bad. Um, Just-in-time access to sharing apps. This one is a problem with uh, AAD groups. When you share an app with an AAD group um, or an AAD group team in Dataverse, the user doesn't have access until they access something in Dataverse. And the workaround here is to go create a flow that hits something in Dataverse other than the app ahead of time, which gives them, which kind of just in time brings their user record in so that they can go, um, they can go access the app. Otherwise, they can't get access to the app because they're not, uh, they're not in Dataverse um, at that time. Custom connector auth and endpoint. There's quite a few issues with custom connectors in general. We'll look at some of the workarounds in the ALM Accelerator demo. Um, auth is one, and it's, we'll actually, we'll get to this a little bit later. So um, when we talk about the, the ugly. Dataverse for Teams right now, the APIs aren't there. The APIs aren't exposed to be able to do automated deployments because we're using APIs in the uh, full-on Dataverse in order to download solutions, set connection references, you know, import solutions and things like that. And they're just not available right now in Dataverse for Teams. So that story is, um, is, is a little bad right now. Uh, environment variable flow propagation, this one is, is bad as well. If you update an environment variable, it just doesn't propagate down to the flows that use that environment variable. You have to actually go in, edit, save, and save the flow again. And then automated testing. There are there's some ability to do automated testing in Canvas Test Studio. Um, pulling that into a pipeline is is difficult, um, and it's uh, there's not a very good end to end story for automated testing with apps flows studio or Canvas. Uh, Dataverse. There's a little bit better um, story with Dataverse because it's you know been around longer, uh, despite the name changes. And there's a lot of tools out there that'll allow you to do some testing. Um, but the end-to-end -end scenarios uh, for automated testing aren't really there. Pipeline performance. This is one of the reasons I set up this demo before we started the session is because pipelines take so long to run. Um, Several of the pipelines we have take anywhere from six to eight minutes to run. Not ideal for a demo. 
Um, we'll see importing and exporting solutions are is a very intensive process, especially if they're big solutions. And those can take a long time. But there's also other things that we'll see in the pipelines that take minutes when they really shouldn't. Like installing the Power Platform tools takes two and a half minutes, which it really shouldn't. So the pipelines become bloated. They just they start taking a really long time. And then unified ALM across an entire platform. Obviously, like I said, Power BI has their own sort of environment management and uh, deployment strategy uh, that doesn't really fit in with the way that solutions work right now. Um, and the things are a bit disjointed. So the ugly. Um, so some of the there's overlap here. So some of the bad is also ugly. Some of the um, ugly is also good. Well, maybe the, maybe not so much there. But connections. There are workarounds to connections. We'll look at the way we're working around the connect creating connections um, in environments in the demo. Data migration. Not a fantastic story there with the you use the deployment, um, uh, the data deployment tool that used to come with the SDK. That's pretty much the recommended way to move data right now, uh, be it configuration data or portal, uh, you know, portal configuration data and things like that. Not fantastic, but it, it, it'll do the trick. And there are there are hooks into the data migration using or doing data migration in um in the ALM accelerator pipelines as well. So sharing flows and apps uh, with Dataverse permissions. Again, the, the reason these are ugly is because there are workarounds. Uh, this was also sort of in the bad section because there's no, uh, there's no platform support for it, but there are hacks in order to get around it. And like I mentioned, the one sharing the process entity, giving people global access to the process entity is, you know, um, one way to work around it. But it's not it's not an ideal solution. Um, the just in time sharing, I talked about that. You can create a flow um, for that flow activation using service principle. This is one that we'll see when we do the demo. You can't activate a flow as a service principle. You have to activate it as a. Uh, uh, interactive user, so with a username and password, or what we'll see is you can actually activate them using impersonation. So if you have the identity of a user uh, that is an interactive user, you can use impersonation to activate a flow in a headless way as a service principle. All right, um, so custom connectors and solutions. We're going to look at that again when we actually do the demo. Uh, that was under the bad. There's some, there are some gnarly things with custom connectors right now that uh, that we need to that need to be fixed in the platform, and um, and then custom connector environments. So pointing it at different environments as you move through the different environments. Component ownership. So setting the owner of a flow or a Canvas app when you import um, a Canvas app can be owned by a service principal, which is our headless user. It cannot be owned by a, or a flow cannot be owned by a service principal. So you actually have to set the component ownership as part of your pipeline in order to um, have a working app at the end of your deployment. And that's our ultimate goal with all of this is we can take an we can take an app, a solution, and have and deploy it to another environment and have a working app at the end. And a lot of these paper cuts and a lot of these sort of bigger items prevent us from doing that now. And a lot of times what we have to do is go in, update something in the in the deployed environment manually and, in order to get it working. And that's just, it's not ideal. Uh, third party ALM components. Um, it's only under the ugly um, because it's not part of the platform. There's nothing ugly about the libraries that people have built to fill in these gaps. Uh, and I applaud those who have. But it's still, from a you know perspective of the platform itself, it's still a little bit, it's still a little bit gnarly and ugly because we have to use those third-party components in order to to do what we're trying to do. And the good, so we've got more and more solution-aware components, as I mentioned, uh, that list keeps updating every day. 
Uh, we've got data source environment variables. I'm going to show you how those work in our demo. We've got disconnected flows, um, disconnected flows in Canvas app. So this was a weird one where for the longest time, if you had a Canvas app calling a flow, the when you deployed it to a new environment via solution, the flow was just broken in the Canvas app. And you would have to go in, you'd have to edit the Canvas app, remove the flow from the Canvas app, add it back again and save it and publish it. And that was obviously not ideal. And that, that bug has been fixed. It's available in the commercial cloud. Um, as of just recently, we realized that it's not available in GCC yet, but um, should be coming since it was released in the commercial cloud uh, several months ago now. Uh, connection references and environment variables. There is a new, well, it's not a new task, but the existing import task in Azure DevOps now can you can point it at a configuration file that specifies your connection references. So um, if you have a flow that has a connection reference and a connection, you can actually link those up on deployment so that your flow will be work in a working state when it's deployed. And same thing for environment variables, that configuration file can contain environment variables, which um, will get set as part of the solution import in your downstream environment. Again, we'll look at that in the demo. GitHub Actions, those came out recently. Uh, there's Power Platform GitHub Actions. They're not quite, uh, there's not quite parity with the Azure DevOps Power Platform tasks yet, but uh, they should be getting there. Canvas app unpack is um, really cool. If you haven't seen it, it used to be that you would export a power app. It would be in this native format um, where it was unreadable. Uh, you couldn't see any of your code. Um, you couldn't see any of your controls or anything. And um, there's now a Canvas app unpack that's available in the pack CLI or the power platform command line interface that allows you to unpack into a source controllable and readable, human readable format. So you can go search your Canvas app code, you can um, source control it, you can do diffs on it and things like that and kind of see the history of it, which is fantastic. Uh, that's part of the ALM accelerator, uh, which brings me to the second to last, the ALM accelerators. What we're trying to do with these accelerators is fill as many of these gaps in the bad and the ugly and also demonstrate the good along the way, um, but give a reference implementation of how you can do end-to-end -end ALM um, on the Power Platform. Um, and that's an investment that Microsoft is making, and it's an investment that they're making at all levels at this point. And the PowerCat team works in the engine, the PowerCat team who's responsible for the COE starter kit and these ALM accelerators works in the engineering organization at Microsoft, which means that they have access to engineering resources. Um, the people who are responsible for putting these things, um, you know, the, the paper cut fixes, the, the new features and such into the platform. So again, going back to the call out of um, action item for this session, be sure to raise it up, raise up those issues that you're having in the discussions, vote up things that you see in there that, you know, you're having issues with as well, because those things will go back to the engineering teams. And the more feedback they're getting on things, uh, the more likely they are to fix them. So, um, again, that's about it. That's all I've got for the good, the bad and the ugly part of this session. Um, I'm going to jump into the demo now and actually show the ALM Accelerator. In particular, this is the ALM Accelerator for Advanced Makers. And there is another ALM Accelerator that's part of the COE Starter Kit. And that is the ALM Accelerator for Makers. Um, there's a bit of history there as to why we have two separate apps. But essentially, the ALM Accelerator for Makers was built on top of GitHub and GitHub workflows and targets a different persona than the app I'm gonna show you does. And the persona that it targets is the maker, the business uh, user who's building power apps, building flows, and just wants to be able to push their work from one environment to another. 
and doesn't have a, a, a grasp on what ALM is, you know, and, and concepts like Git and pull requests and things like that. So this is going to be a little bit technical if you came to the session, you know, um, kind of looking for a sort of overview of ALM uh, and what's possible. This is going to get this is going to get a little deep. I'm, we're going to look at some um, Azure DevOps side of things and we're going to talk about Git concepts. But ultimately, the goal of this app is the same. It is to move things from one environment to another, to have checks along the way to ensure that, you know, um, there's approvals for deployment and such. And, you know, um, and and validate that things are being pushed out correctly. So I'll jump over in the Power Apps. This is our development environment. What you're going to see is work in progress on the ALM accelerator for advanced makers. It's not completed. It's actually, this is like completely preview. Nobody's really seen it before. Um, by the time that uh, DynamicsCon happens, uh, this is, you know, we're recording a little bit a month before the actual event. By the time that DynamicsCon comes around, this is going to be completed and will be out there and available. So some of this is a work in progress, so bear with us on that. But um, you're kind of looking at the latest bits in our development environment. So we've got this app here. It's a, it's a doozy. Um, there wasn't a lot of time spent on, on user experience or UI in it, but it's essentially used to demonstrate some of the things that I kind of rifled through at the beginning, um, things that don't work when you deploy and things that are gotchas from having a working app in a target environment when you do a deployment. So one of them being environment variables, having environment variables set. Um, you know, obviously this is our, the environment variable here is dev. When we move to our validation environment, we want it to say something different. When we move it to our test environment, we want it to say something else. Move it to production, we want it to say something additionally different. Um, so here's a run flow button. This is a flow, you know, this is our demonstration of the issue I was uh, talking about previously where the flows were disconnected from apps. Obviously this one's connected fine uh, in this environment, in our dev environment, and we'll see it working in our validation downstream environment as well. Here's an example of a custom connector that I'm going to call. And I did do a little work here to, um, so this is my development environment. So I put a Star Trek joke in there. Um, but when I move that to my validation environment, I don't want people to see um, how nerdy I am. All right. So I'm going to jump over to the Power Apps here. And first thing we're going to look at is an app that we're going to deploy. And this app is quite impressive. Um, if you're a UX designer, you may want to leave the room or shield your eyes from it. But this is our app, and this is in our uh, COE development environment. So you guys are seeing uh, bits that haven't even been released yet for the ALM Accelerator. Uh, this is our sample solution for the ALM Accelerator. Um, this obviously, this is simply a test app that we use to test out some of the features of the ALM Accelerator. Um, this is not something that we release as part of the COE Starter Kit, apart from the ability to, to validate some of the things that we want to validate in deployments. Um, so we've got a we've got one thing here that we've discussed: environment variables. Uh, we can see that this is um, pulling in an environment variable called Dev because we're in our Dev environment. We've got a flow here that we can click on this and we get a value return from flow. Again, going back to our list of issues, there was that issue um, a couple of months ago where the flow was disconnected. When you imported an app, we're going to see that this, when we deploy this downstream, it's actually running because the flow is enabled and it's connected to the app. We've got the, we've got a custom connector in here as well. Another one of the things I kind of glossed over in the the bad and the ugly, but custom connector deployment can be tricky. And in this case, we have a custom connector that can actually be deployed to a downstream environment and point to a different API uh, on the back end. Um, and we'll see how that works. So I call that, and you can see here's my 
here's my Star Trek joke that I've thrown in here, but this is my development environment. So it's a safe place for me to do make those jokes. But if I push it to the testing team, you know, they may not, they may not get the joke. So I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that this custom connector returns something different in those environments. Um, and then I've got a SharePoint list down here. So this is a, this is an issue tracker um, pointing to, at the issue tracker in SharePoint. It's got one item in it right now. It's saying I'm having trouble deploying. So we're going to see that this actually changes. It points, it's going to point to a different list when we deploy. All right, so this is our app. This is the ALM Accelerator. The other one was not. Um, and I'll give you a quick overview of how this works. So when you first come into this app, you're going to get dropped on the settings. And the settings page is for you to enter your Azure DevOps organization, project, and repository. Um, the repository is where your source, uh, plot, your solution source code will get ultimately um, uh, source controlled, and the project and org organization is, um, you know, the orgs and projects in DevOps. Once you set that, you're going to get a list of environments. These are service connections that are configured in Azure DevOps that you have access to. Um, these should be just your development environment because uh, this tool is intended for makers in their development environment to be able to um, uh, be able to perform ALM. So I'm in my COE new dev environment. If I pointed at this test, I've got some extra ones that I shouldn't have in this list for now, but that's fine. Uh, I don't have anything in here because there's no unmanaged solutions in our test environment. Everything is deployed downstream as managed. But in our dev environment, I've got this whole list of solutions. All right. Uh, this is our solution that contains that lovely app that we saw a little while ago. This is the one that we're going to deploy. Um, again, going back to the solutions aren't that discoverable. We intentionally have the open source solution here because the intent is that we you provide this to your makers as a way of them sort of starting their day right you've got a solution in place that you're working on and you want to go in and you want to create a new app so from here and this is you know it also helps with to avoid context switching essentially we created an app because you're going to be working in power apps you don't have to necessarily context switch over to azure devops to to do something um, you've got that app you know, sitting right there that allows you to, to um, source control your solutions and push them downstream to uh, other environments. So that lands me in the solution view. Um, I can add from here, I can create a new app, create a cloud flow. It's very obvious um, that I can do that from here. I could go over here and hit the new under apps or under flows, and that would be, um, you know, not advisable because those things won't end up in a solution. They won't get deployed. So the idea is to make this experience a little bit more um, obvious to the, to the users. Uh, next to that, we've got a configured deployment setting. So this is where you're getting to see sort of how the, some of the sausage being made, I guess. Um, this is brand new. We started development of this about a week ago and we've come pretty far on it. Um, by the time that this is a work in progress, as I said, this is a development, like, no new bits hasn't been released, um, but the um, but by the time this uh, Dynamics Con happens, um, this should be released and should be feature complete at that point. So the first thing to notice here is that we've got environments. So these are the environments that we're going to deploy to. We've got a validation environment, a test, and a production. If we had four environments, uh, basically four pipelines in Azure DevOps for this solution, we would see four of them here. So, but for now, we've only got the three. All right, so this is my production environment. You can see my, the connection references. I go to validation. It's going to look very similar. It's got the same connection references that are hooked up here. If I go to test, I'm going to see the same thing for the most part. Um, but you will see I've actually got three connections in this test environment. Um, one of them has an error and two of them are connected. But I can drill down into that and actually see the, um, the issue with the connection. So in this case, I've got to update my password. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, in addition, if I, were, if I happened to come in here and none of these were set, 
I can create a new one from here. So we had three in that drop down before. I'm going to create a fourth one. All right. Come back here and refresh. And now I've got four in this list. So create, that's creating connection references. This configuration data ultimately gets stored in, um, in the ALM accelerator and gets pushed to the deployment pipelines. So all of that configuration data goes into the pipelines and the pipelines use those to um, do the deployment. Here we've got our environment variables. Um, you can see this is our SharePoint list that we're gonna point to in our validation environment. So that's our site that we're gonna point to and here's the issue tracker um, list. We've got a, you know, a string environment variable, we've got a number environment variable, we've got some JSON here, um, and then we've got our connector, connector host URL and our connector base URL, which are uh, used for our custom connector. And this is how we are going to repoint our custom connector to a, um, a new endpoint. And our custom connector was the one that uh, returned the um, Dynamics Con, um, but we'll see that it's actually um, in this My API test. It says something different. And if I just kind of go to that uh, real quick, let's go back to the custom connector. So here it is in, our, in all its glory. Um, click test. Uh, so this is our dev environment. Test the operation here. Oops. Oh no, too many requests. Uh, no, that's what you get for using free uh, using free APIs. Anyway, so <laughs> we may not be able to show that, unfortunate. But um, yeah, this was just a free API site that I was using. I didn't realize that there was a limit on the number of calls. I should have known that. I only called it like 10 times. Um, anyway, so those are our configuration values for the deployment. Um, once we've set that, we've made our changes, uh, whether it be it configuration changes, we've added an app to our solution and we've added a flow. We're going to push the changes to Git. And from here, I can select an existing, existing branch. I can select, um, or I can create a new branch. So I can call this whatever I like. Um, say new branch. That's Click commit. And then once that's committed, and again, this pipeline, this is a, running a pipeline in the background. So once this happens and it takes about six to eight minutes, which, you know, like I mentioned, um, this is a, it's a bit of a slow process. Um, from there, we want to create a pull request. So we're going to create a pull request based on our branch. And I've got one that's pre-existing. So here's one where I added the SharePoint list. And I want to pull that into the ALM Accelerator sample solution branch. Or I could potentially pull it into main um, or whatever it may be. In this case, we're using a, a version next strategy. So this is going to be our next version before we actually merge it into main. Um, I'm not going to create that, actually, because we already um, I already created one for this exact um, source in Dart destination and it'll bark at me for that. But let's go look at the one that's out there already. All right, so here's the one I created previously. You can see, like I said, I had already created it from that branch into this branch. We're doing a validation build. When we do that, um, it's going to go out and it's going to build and deploy to our validation environment. And it's going to wire up all the connection references we sent it. It's going to wire up the environment variables. It's going to turn on our flows. It's going to set ownership of the flows. It's going to um, obviously deploy the solution. Um, it's going to import data as well. If we have data sitting out in our uh, repo for um, the uh, data configuration tool to import, um, it's doing a, a number of steps. But ultimately, what we wanted and what we have in our target environment is a working app. And I will jump over. Do 
to our validation environment. Obviously, our custom connector is going to fail because I didn't pay the bills. But here's our app. Um, All right, we'll give it a chance to kind of spin up and go out and get the environment variables. We should see the values that we put in. There we go, validation environment 22.22. Um, we run the flow. Flow is working. Awesome. Uh, we're going to call the custom connector. It's going to tell us again we forgot to pay, or it might just fail um, because it's not getting the response it expects. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. It would have been good to show. Um, but then our SharePoint list, you can see, is now populated with our other SharePoint list. So this was our ALM Accelerator sample site. It's got two in here. Um, one we looked at prior to that was our sample test. And our issue tracker, which only had one in it. All right, so I'm going to jump back to PowerPoint. And so just reviewing what we talked about, um, obviously, again, I, I, there's not, a, a, not an exhaustive list of things where there are gaps and what have been filled and, and, um, and such. We could have probably spent all day on that, but I wanted to sort of throw it out there um, and let people know you know that these things we're aware that Microsoft is aware of these things. A lot of people are having pain with these things. Um, we're trying to the the PowerCat team's trying to fill some of that pain or ease some of that pain with the COE starter kit and the tools that we're building um, there. So feel free to reach out. You know, feel free to connect with us if it's not a discussion. If you have an idea, if you have an issue. Um, you can track issues there uh, and uh, would love to get the feedback, um, you know, on on everything related to ALM and the Power Platform so that we can get answers and, uh, and hopefully get them resolved. All right. And with that, um, thank you all for attending and we'll take some questions here and thanks a lot. Okay, um, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I didn't get to see the finished product, um, but um, so there was a there was some questions in the chat about uh, how to get to the um, ALM accelerator for advanced makers. So I think I pasted the link in to the chat for that, and as well as the uh, so to the latest release as well as to the docs on that. Um, there are some differences between what we saw in the session and what is out there right now. Um, hopefully, they're good differences. Uh, we've added some new features to the as far as sharing and um, and things like that on the in the app uh, in this release. And I got it out just in time this morning, so that's that's good news. Um, the other question was uh, pointing at the COE documentation on Microsoft Docs. The I mentioned earlier that there's two there's two types of ALM accelerators. There's the ALM accelerator for makers. Uh, they're both uh, quite a mouthful. Um, ALM accelerator for makers, which is released and part of the COE starter kit. What I was showing in the demo was the ALM accelerator for advanced makers. There is ongoing work to consolidate those two. Um, the difference between them, as I mentioned, is ALM Accelerator for Makers, uh, it targets GitHub. Advanced Makers targets Azure DevOps. Um, but they also target two different personas. So the Makers um, app targets um, the Makers app targets the Maker persona and the Advanced Maker for the, the more dev um, persona. So our initial um, attempt at consolidating those two is going to be to bring the maker experience into the advanced maker and so that you have the Azure DevOps sort of two different user experiences. So um, that's uh, that's that's it on, on that. Um, 
I did mention, I think I made a mention of something earlier uh, in the slides about component ownership or flow ownership. Flows can be owned by a service principal. However, there may be cases and the reason that you would want to update the owner is to, um, if you've got like a, a, you know, you don't have an interactive flow, you have a flow that sits out there and waits, um, you know, for over a time period or something like that. You may want that flow to run as a different user than the uh, service principal. And that's why you would update your component ownership or set component ownership on that flow uh, when it's deployed to a downstream environment. And there's licensing and um, things like that associated with that. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, best way to transfer data between two environments. Mila, um, it is possible with the ALM accelerator. Uh, right now, it's using sort of the, um, it's using the data migration configuration tool that comes with the SDK. Uh, it's using, you know, basically you export that data, you put that data into uh, your source control, and then the pipelines will deploy that data. As of right now, we don't have any way to, um, to specify what that data should be on the front end. That is something that we've considered adding as well as the, you know, the environment variables, connection references, and things like that, so that people can specify what data they want to um, export from their dev environment into their downstream target environment. Um, ALM Accelerator allow for version management. Yes, because it is using source control as it's backing. And um, it is, you know, essentially anytime you export your solution, you're getting um, you're getting that the goodness of the source control versioning where you can go back and um, you know pull earlier versions of the of the solution, rebuild it and import it. Um, the one of the things I didn't show in the ALM accelerator is you can actually point at a specific branch and import from that branch into your development environment which gives you the ability to say, you know, I want to go get, um, uh, you know, Joe's work that's doing dev on this and import that into my development environment um, and, you know, uh, have his version of the app to start development on. So source control versioning is there, um, you know, as far as just versioning the solution, yes, the, the pipelines actually uh, handle that as well. Um, we use a specific versioning, um, you know, for the, the the version of the solution, we use um, you know like a major minor and um, a date stamp on the end of it. But you can configure that in the the pipelines for the ALM accelerator as well to use your specific versioning strategy. Um, yeah, and I think that was that was about all the questions. I've got we've got two minutes here, so if anybody has anything else. Um, you know, and if not, head over to the COE Starter Kit uh, GitHub repo. Um, everything in the COE Starter Kit is now open source, meaning that we use the ALM Accelerator internally at in PowerCat to source control the COE Starter Kit. So all of the source code is there. We're also, um, you know, doing the, the, the team that does the COE Starter Kit is releasing once a month. Uh, ALM Accelerator for Advanced Makers is still in preview. It's not, so it's technically sits outside of the COE starter kit until we go into, um, until we release it for, for real. So it is in public preview. There could be some breaking changes, um, but it's, you know, um, I think this latest release really, you know, um, is, is, a, is a huge leap in, in the um, functionality. And I think I'm looking forward to, to getting feedback on it. And again, the call out, at the beginning, if you see something, say something. If you have Power Platform ALM issues, put it up on the discussion board in that in that repo, and somebody will get back to you. And it may the answer may be we can't fix it, but we're going to let somebody know about it, or we may add it to the COE starter kit um, to fill fill a gap. So, thank you, everybody. Uh, that's my time, and uh, and thank you to um, DynamicsCon for having me. Mm -hmm.